Hi everyone, welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. My name is Nina and welcome to a brand new episode of Round the Corner, the show where I look ahead to our next fixture, which in this case just happens to be Liverpool, away at Anfield after Jurgen Klopp has announced that he's leaving Liverpool at the end of the season. We are lucky enough to be the first Premier League side to go away to Anfield. Yes, it's safe to say it's going to be intimidating. It's not going to be an easy game because from here on, every game is going to be like the last dance for Liverpool and they're going to want to basically give everything to give them the maximum amount of chance to win, yeah, whatever trophy they can. Could be multiple even, it really depends. But unfortunately, it's just what we have to do. They've got so much at stake as well, considering, you know, they're going to want to have breathing room at the top you know they're currently uh with a game in hand at the top of the league but they've also got arsenal coming up this weekend so they're going to look at this week and say it's a must win and they're not going to want chelsea to be the first team that hinders that possibility but let's get straight into it guys it's not all lost before we've even, even played the game we've got a history of now eight or nine draws with them so i'm sure that they're not coming into this game either thinking it's easy Easy, but they also will play their strongest available players and um, it really depends on how we set up for this one so I'm sure Pochettino is losing some sleep wondering how to set up on Wednesday night because we have injuries that's no secret to anyone um, and we're going to have to play um, potentially another player out of position maybe even two which already makes it a little bit more difficult but in no means I think it's going to be an easy game I think if we can score first which is near to impossible at Anfield but it's not impossible um, if we can score first I genuinely think we can get something out of that game and when I say something maybe a draw <laughs> But guys, I can't lie to you, I'm a bit fearful for this one, just because of the reasons I mentioned, and I just think Anfield is going to be absolutely buzzing. Uh, the fans are going to make it special for the players, going to make it special for Klopp, and again, they've got so much to play for. But, you know, it's not a free hit for us either, we want points as well, we want to climb further up in the table, we want to look competitive, don't we? And it's exactly this, coming toe-to-toe -to -toe with the bigger clubs in the Premier League and getting something out of it, or at least putting on a really good, promising performance, would still be seen as enough. I don't think anyone is expecting us to go away and at all costs beat Liverpool at Anfield. You know, it's not a game we look at in the same way as we have perhaps our last few that were, you know, must-win games. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't at least go away with um, with hope and with fight. But one thing I always say is we do turn up mentally to these games and the atmosphere is always good. There's always um, a sort of understanding among the players that they are playing a very important game, a big game. And obviously a lot of our players are young. They're not experienced in this sort of, um, like in this sort of podium to play at Anfield. Um, we've got youngsters like Mudrik who first actually made an appearance for example against um, Liverpool but you know these young players don't yet know exactly what it means to go away and play there so already in terms of experience in terms of squads in terms of affinity with manager in terms of the bench in terms of the atmosphere everything is sort of leaning towards Liverpool but anyways lies, let, lies guys let's talk about Chelsea because I don't think Poch is going to change too much from our previous lineup but that being said, I do believe that Chilwell will start at left back because we cannot afford to play two, well, we can't afford to play full centre backs in our back line again because that's just going to call for threat and call to be exposed. So I think we're going to have uh, the need for some experience on that left hand side. And, you know, we saw that Chilwell already from his return looks brighter when he was on the pitch. One of our better creators and one of our sort of. Um, more composed players on the ball he's got experience it's needed now more than ever so I think he's going to start hopefully that's uh, not going to be a worry or a concern in terms of his fitness I think he should now be available to start obviously we did spare him from starting in our last game so hopefully that's um 
you know, Pochettino thinking two steps ahead there with that one because this one we're going to need chilli. Um, so again, I don't think too much changes from our back line. I think Cole was obviously still not going to be available. Um, but I think we do see Baddy Ashil and Thiago Silva and De Sassi probably will occupy the right back role. This game's not going to be one for Alfie Gilchrist. So with all due respect, Alfie, you were amazing, but this game's not for you, bro. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I think we have some physicality there in that back line. We've got height as well, which is much needed, particularly when they can be dangerous on set pieces as well. Defending corners, we're going to have to be on it. We absolutely are going to be, have to be on it because it's just going to be so silly if we concede, you know, from corners. Set piece defending has been quite concerning this season and it's something that we all know we need to work on. So we have to be absolutely on it. You know, they've got a lot of height in their back line, in their team. So we should absolutely be awake alert. And um, I, I think that's the best way we can set up. Obviously, in behind, it's going to be Petrovic. He has absolutely been living up to the expectations. He has been, I don't even want to, you know, say a big word and jinx him or whatever, but he's been almost, you know, perfect. He has honestly been so integral. He's basically the one that ensured a replay against Aston Villa, in my opinion, because they easily could have scored in that second half. And then we're talking about, yeah, a lost game. He has been very composed and he's so vocal, guys, and I think that's so important particularly when you are going to face a big dog like Liverpool it's so important that we've got communication on the pitch that he's speaking out to the players directing them telling them where to go we need that from somewhere and even though he's young he still has those leadership qualities that you can see and what a better way to have them than in your keeper and uh, so for me it's yeah no questions there obviously Sanchez already played against Liverpool it was actually his first game in a Chelsea shirt it was against Liverpool on the first day of the season. So we've already seen him in that role, yeah? I wanna see Petrovic because I think this game is going to be the game where we see him be tested at the most, you know? So far we've played against opposition that, yeah, we have seen some brilliant saves, but we're talking about a Liverpool side that will be getting shots off on Wednesday night. So he will be tested and that's how we will see. Um, yeah, exactly what he is. And I, I literally said that, you know, even though I favour Petrovic more than Sanchez, I still want to give uh, Petrovic the opportunity to play the reverse fixtures of all the, you know, the Arsenals, the Tottenham's, the Liverpool's that Sanchez got to play so that we can really sort of then compare the two, judge them and say, look, well, they've both now played against stronger opposition. This one does better. And then we can potentially have our final solidity of we've got a number one keeper. So hopefully that continues, long may it continue with Petrovic. But yeah, for me, absolutely starting in goal. And I know a lot of you Chelsea fans would agree with me but if you disagree let me know in the comments down below I'll be intrigued to hear nothing changes in midfield Enzo and Caicedo will be starting Caicedo obviously he's always been under scrutiny hasn't he and I mean so has Enzo but you know the whole narrative surrounding the fight for Caicedo back in summer between Liverpool and between Chelsea is also going to add to the mix it'll be interesting to see how he um, copes in that midfield I think he's going to have a lot of pressure he's going to need to be quicker on the turn as well sometimes he is a little bit pushed off the ball too easily so I think he's going to need a lot of sort of presence and physicality in that midfield same goes for Enzo as well but I want to see his range of passes I want to see him helping us really um use our space which we always say we work better with you know they're going to give us space and they don't want to sit back at us so we're going to have that space and we'll need someone like Enzo to utilize it and honestly like just pin passes wherever he can um and obviously Conor Gallagher is going to start because I mean he was rested in our cup game obviously he played um against Villa um was split again with um, some fans being impressed, others not. He is also in talks about apparently still potentially leaving the door before the transfer window closes in a couple of days, which is bizarre to think. I don't know how realistic that is on a, like, a logistic level as well, but we will see. I mean, I personally don't believe he will leave, but if he's not in and around the squad tomorrow, then that could be maybe a big point tomorrow, Wednesday night. It could be a big pointer. It is tomorrow, it's Tuesday, what am I on about? Tomorrow night, um, if he's not in the squad, then yeah, that could maybe raise some questions, maybe might have you thinking something else. But this is where it gets interesting, guys, because something inside of me is telling me that 
Pochettino is just going to want to play someone like Palmer as a false nine because he's going to look at Breuer, someone that he doesn't really trust at all, has not favoured him to start in some of the cup games. Why on earth would he start him against Liverpool? You know, when you've got players like Van Dijk and Konate up that he's got to deal with and overcome. Why? It doesn't really make sense. If he doesn't trust him... I don't think he starts, guys. And some will say it's ridiculous. At least we have an out and night number nine. At least just play him there because, again, you're just reducing your chances. Palmer doesn't thrive as a false nine. We could say and argue that some of his um, worst games have been when he's played as a false nine. And he's not had many bad games. But, I mean, it's surely no coincidence that, you know, he does have a bad game when he is a false nine. So that's going to be a question for Pochettino to really actually um, proper think through because... I personally don't want to see Palmer there. It's wasted um, potential. It's wasted creativity as well. And you can see that he overthinks his time on the ball a lot more. We need him to be lethal with that final shot. Just firing it away when he's got the space. Just, you know, letting a shot off. That is going to be crucial against the Liverpool side. So I don't want to see him there. I do think, however, though... Uh, Pochettino is going to start but no that being said I don't think he will I don't think he will guys I like to think because I'll tell you why because if he does play Palmer as a false nine obviously we know Sterling will start and that leaves someone like Noni Medweke or Mudrick playing and as much as Medweke has been you know living up to um, what he has been given to do he also can be argued didn't finish his chances against Aston Villa or perhaps should have uh, you know maybe scored a goal and looked a little bit raw on the ball looked a bit like he was over dribbling overthinking his time on the ball too much maybe could be a cause for concern because you don't want that sort of um lack of confidence against Liverpool Wednesday you know we need as much reassurance and confidence in our players as we can and with Mudrick I think the same point stands he looked like a lost puppy bless him in our last couple games I mean I know he was only brought on as a sub in our last game but you know he did play against Barra and he just did look very lost didn't he so I worry about that and this is the only reason I might think and change my prediction about Poch is that maybe he does start Breuer and maybe he just starts Palmer and Sterling on the wings because that actually means you know we've got a little bit more experience a little bit more sort of goal scoring proven sort of players that have the numbers to back up their names and then hopefully he just believes that we'll be able to see Breuer finish a chance but yeah guys I think that's how it's going to go that's how it's going to plan out I'm not going to offer a prediction I do think we can give Liverpool a game but if we concede first I worry I really do worry guys we know that it's difficult to find levelers we know it's difficult to make comebacks and you know they're going to make uh, our Anfield a fortress from here on we're going to be the first Premier League side to visit there uh, since the announcement so whether we take the hit or not I don't know but let me know your thoughts in the comments down below guys make sure you're subscribe to Chelsea Fan TV also check out my personal channel Nina's Chelsea Corner linked in the description I can't even speak anymore linked in the description below stay tuned for the content that's going to drop uh, around the Liverpool game Thank you so much for watching, guys.